When a kingdom feels they need to zero one of their own members, or rally them at all, then something has gone horribly wrong. And in this case, our entire kingdom is united in taking out King Talib, who has spent over $100,000 in Rise of Kingdoms, and that's just my estimate. What you're about to watch is a kingdom unified in exacting justice in someone who breaks the rules and has been given multiple warnings and opportunities for literally any other outcome than what you're about to see. Strap yourselves in. Justice is on the way. Allow me to paint a picture here. I'm minding my own business, on a road trip with my family, and then I get message after message, notification after notification that I've got to look in game. We're quadruple rallying King Talib. This is a player with 175 million power, at least at the start of this foray, and he broke the rules. The rules were so incredibly simple. It goes as follows. There's an event called the Eve of the Crusade. It helps the kingdom a lot, but doesn't really help your own account very much. We change the dynamics of that event by saying the people who get the top 10 in that will also get the top 10 in a different event. Now that means we as a kingdom are united in that agreement. King Talib, however, decided to throw that aside and say, you know what, I'm just gonna win this event anyways. I don't really care that I didn't earn it. We had a lot of conversations, a lot of opportunity for anything, literally anything but this. But he has forced our hand. And so here we are as a kingdom, fully unified in rallying him down. I was not able to participate in those rallies. As I said, I was literally driving in a matter of under 10 minutes we're taking out an unbelievable amount of kings to lead power, and that's what you've seen already so far. We've got a quadruple rally going with Attila and Takeda as the primary rally. Then there is a Guan Alex as the second rally to hit. Then we've got two Ramses E songs powering out unbelievable amounts of damage. Now, if we were doing this again, we would have one of those Ramses E-Songs be an Edward and Tamaris, and another one be a Ramses and Mehmed. But this was not some big thing that we spent a bunch of time coordinating. It was kind of like, oh, hey, it's uh, random time, and King Talib's shield, his peace shield, that one thing that prevents us from doing this, he doesn't have one right now. So the second that happened, people teleported over, and they made this happen, exacting justice on behalf of the kingdom. Now, look, I really would prefer if this was not the outcome that we arrive at here, where King Talib needs to get zeroed, but I do feel that this is the only recourse we have for a player who's gone really fully rogue. My intention and hope was that he would instead migrate. He decided he'd rather break the rules and be the only one in the kingdom who continues to do so. So again, if our kingdom feels that someone needs to get rallied, they really are at the very last straw and we feel there's nothing else we can do. And unfortunately, King Talib comes online and he pops a peace shield. That was really the only way he could have stopped us from fully zeroing his city. In that brief period of time, he lost over 35 million power, which is a huge amount of power loss in this game. What we're going to do now is show you the reports and walk through a little bit of what the heck just happened because we were shredding in these rallies. Let's get a look at these reports, and I want to say that King Zalib knew that we were going to be hunting him, so he should have been 100% fully prepared for this exact situation where he was getting quadruple rallied, which is why I find it so astonishing that of all the commanders he puts on his wall, Richard I. Just because you're spending boatloads of money in a mobile game doesn't mean you necessarily know how to optimize at every turn. And in this case, he is truly trading his money for time because he does not have a lot of time to do those optimizations, it would seem. And this one cost him a heck of a lot. His Richard I paired with Esong is far from what I would recommend. Maybe if you're in your first season of KVK and even then... Probably not. A Sun Tzu is probably a better pick and certainly would have been even in this exact situation. Kind of remarkable. So he's got Richard I on the wall. This is the Guan Alex rally trading positive. And I'll point out that this rally is offering a lot of debuffs. There's a silence from the Guan. There's a defense, I think, reduction from the Guan as well. Uh, and Alexander the Great is making it so that the garrison takes extra damage. And we will prove that. That's an important topic to get a look at. Continuing to look at a few of the other reports, and we do have some of the reports over here. 
Um, some of these are just screenshots. Here's another Juggernaut rally. This was the second rally that Juggernaut did. 135,000 dead for Juggernaut, and then two point, well, 270,000 dead for King Talib. In King Talib's rally is all T5s, or I guess his city defense, whereas Juggernaut's got mostly T4s. So these trades are exceptionally positive. You can even see that in the numbers. 678,000 dead for us and 2.4 million power loss for Talib. Continuing on, another report. Here's an Attila Takeda rally, which is pretty sick, coming from Sterling. Let me tell you, if Sterling rallies you with Attila Takeda, <laughs> you are getting shredded. Here is no, no exception to the rule here. This was the first rally against King Talib City. 420,000 dead for Sterling and over a million dead for King Talib. Absolutely savage report here. Continuing on to another report. Uh, here we've got one of the Ramses and Esong reports. I don't know if I've seen a single player in the game who's got much better gear than Spartan. His gear is completely nuts. 172,000 dead for Spartan and... 335,000 dead for Talib. Now, I just want to point out that Talib has got 160 ish million power while this is going on. So he vastly outnumbers. The fact that we're trading positive here is gross and a testament to just how good these are going for us. All right, here are a few of the reports from Cortex. Again, that first rally that we did with the Attila Takeda. Then the second Attila Takeda rally was absolutely shredding. 244,000 dead for us at 1.8 million power loss, and 763,000 dead for Talib. Those are all T5s, 7.6 million power loss. I mean, beast mode engaged. Getting a look at the next report here, we've got one of Spartan's reports. We saw this already. 172,000 dead for Spartan, 335,000 dead for Talib. Moving on to the next report. We've got another Spartan rally, 86,000 dead for Spartan, 192,000 dead for Talib. That is a half a million power loss for us and 2 million power loss for Talib. Looking into the next one, here was the first Juggernaut rally, 243,000 dead for the Juggernaut crew and 370,000 dead for Talib. He also had some go to the hospital, so that was the first rally. Looking in on the next one, the 135,000 dead for Juggernaut and 270,000 dead for Talib. I mean, just completely insane. Here is one of the reports from Overpower, previously known as Hulk. So this is the other Ramsey's Esong rally that was running. 126,000 dead for uh, the Ramsey's army and 264,000 dead for Talib. And if we look in at the other report here, 309,000 dead for us in the first rally, 409,000 dead for Talib. This one went much more in Talib's favor. Um, relatively speaking, we still traded positive, which is again astonishing given that he's got. 12 million troops in his city. If you wanted to see the breakdown of those troops, he had 3.5 million uh, infantry, 766,000 T5 siege. He had 3.2 million archers and 4.2 million cavalry. Kind of nuts. Kind of nuts. And I don't know what he's doing with these T1s, but whatever. They're taking space in his hospital. Um, crazy. In terms of the troop buffs, of course, everybody's got expertise to everything in all of these fights, which definitely is relevant for the outcomes of these fights. And one thing I wanted to show you in the battle log, a little bit of myth busting. In previous videos, card up in the top, we proved that things are not always what they seem with debuffs that folks are applying and buffs that folks are applying to garrisons and to the field, uh, particularly with Joan of Arc, Alexander the Great, and Constantine. So one of the things I wanted to do is prove that the Alexander the Great damage reduction debuff would in fact apply to a city because you would be surprised these things often do not apply. Um, in particular, like you would have thought Joan of Arc could buff a garrison, but she cannot. 
if she's not in that garrison. And I don't know if she can if she's even in the garrison here. So let's find a situation, which I know will be in this report, where we can see the debuff from Alexander the Great having been applied. And here it is. The bleeding effect caused by Alexander the Great's Shield of the King. So this is 30% extra damage taken from the expertise on Alexander the Great. Um, it does apply, even though it says like three nearby things get targeted, it did apply directly to Talib's city. So that does prove that in fact it applies there. One thing that's noteworthy is I'm pretty sure everybody was using a silent trial but we only see the silent trial from Overpower in this report because it's his report. Um, we don't see the rage reduction effect, I think, from the other people that were rallying. I'm assuming they had a silent trial. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they all didn't, but it would sort of shock me if um, Overpower is the only one who's using their silent trial in this crazy set of rallies. So um, if we were to look a little more closely in this, we probably could sniff out exactly what talent build Talib had, but I don't think I've got it in me today to go and get a look here. Now, you may be wondering at this point, just cool, like how did we even get to this place, right? In KVK Season 3, Talib was a great contributor among the top in the kingdom. Um, in Season 4, Talib did not participate very much, and he sort of felt like it wasn't a situation where we could win, so we just wasn't going to contribute, which I think is not an amazing stance to take, but that is literally what he told me of his participation. Um, and, you know, look, whatever it is, what it is. Um, but at the end of the last KVK, there was a weird situation where one rogue player from Kingdom 210 was attacking things and, and hit a bunch of Talib's farmers, I think. And Talib, uh, among others, had a great response in, like, look, defending the kingdom. Uh, but he was ready to rally a bunch of stuff from 210, even after that conflict was completely resolved and over with, um, to the point that uh, Negan felt he had to delete the flag that was in Kingsland from our kingdom to deter anyone else from teleporting into that area. But from that moment forward, I think Talib was kind of upset for whatever reason, and I think that's where I think he went off the rails in terms of his relationship with folks in the kingdom and what he thought of them, because I think he wanted to just deliver extreme punish and vengeance. And to be really clear, like, you know, we did not sanction further attacks. It was really clear at the end of that KVK that, like, there was an agreement. This one player was rogue. We don't need to go ham. Like, it's all done with. He wanted to keep going. We wanted to stop. Um, and I think that's what, what set him off. I think that's what set him off to the point where then later on he felt like, you know, okay, I don't care who's supposed to win this mighty governor. I'm going to do whatever I want. And that really snowballed out of control. Um, and we really, I just want to emphasize the extreme amount of effort that I put in to try to chat with Talib to keep him, you know, from going completely rogue and not having this outcome. Um, but, you know, he makes his choices and he's made it clear that, like, no one influences his choices but him. So um, this this is where... We're at. My preference would be that he migrates, but you know, he's still somewhere. I mean, if I if I asked in our zero traders, zero the traders chat, which is basically like a chat we have for, you know, keep enforcing the rules, which we really have not had much occasion to ever use. It was really kind of created specifically to handle this, you know, Talib situation. I don't know. He's in a zone one somewhere. I don't know exactly where he is. I think he's a hundred and thirty six million power at this point. Um, in fact, we can find this out. Rankings, individual power. Uh, King Talib, 136 million power. So we took about 40 million power off of him. And, um, you know, if I look at his info, we killed a bunch of troops here. He was at about 30 million or so dead. Now he's at 34 and a half million dead. Um, he also killed a bunch of troops in the process, but uh, not nearly as many as he took deads here. So pretty wild, pretty freaking wild how that whole thing worked out. Like, quite frankly, I hope he migrates somewhere, and I wish him well on his journey if he does. Um, if he doesn't, then, like, he's always got a peace shield, and maybe he doesn't care about that. It's entirely possible that he just doesn't care, and, well, 
consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see what happens next. Throw a like on this video if you enjoyed this report out on our attempt to zero King Talib. If he had not come online, it would have been pretty swift and aggressive punishment from our quadruple rallying with literally no notice whatsoever. This was like, he's rallyable. Everybody went over and they did the deed. I'm very impressed with how our kingdom came together. And again, like absolutely no hard feelings whatsoever toward King Talib. I hope he just migrates um, and that that's the choice that he makes and that it seems like an obvious choice. I doubt that's the choice that he'll make. I doubt that seems obvious to him. He's going to do whatever he wants to do. So it's going to get lively again, I assume. And when it gets lively, we'll roll the cameras. Or in this case, thanks to one of our Alliance members who did wish to uh, share that footage with me. Really appreciate your sharing that so that I could capture this moment and share it with others, even though we were literally driving a car when this all went down. Uh, man. And no. We did not, we did not play Rise of Kingdoms to engage. We literally continued driving to a safe place, changed the driver, then got a little involved. Whew. Never a dull moment. I don't know why people can't just like leave rather than go toxic, but I'll emphasize that if we have had to rally somebody, then they have gone hyper toxic in our kingdom and it is the entirety of the kingdom that is in full alignment. I mean, it's yeah, you got a, about a thousand players agreeing that, like, that's not okay. Anyways, enough of that. I'm out. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.